So in part A, we're going to be dealing with a potential that behaves in such a way, which we can represent graphically in with this graph over here. And then what we're going to be finding in this problem is the reflection coefficient for the case when the energy level is smaller than V0. So the way we do that is that we're going to divide this whole setup here into two regions. There's region 1 and region 2. Region 1 refers to the region when x is smaller than 0. And then we're going to solve the Schrodinger equation for this part. And the region 2 corresponds to the part where x is larger than 0. And then we're also going to solve the Schrodinger equation for this part. So that's what we're going to do in this video. And then since we're considering the case when the energy level is smaller than V0, that would correspond to the case where you would have an energy level at somewhere around this region over here, which is smaller than V0. So now let's try to solve the Schrodinger equation for region 1. So in region 1, this corresponds to the region x is smaller than 0. And then we're going to solve the time-independent Schrodinger equation. So within region 1, you can see that the potential is just equal to 0. So that's why we have nothing over here. So this term is just equal to e times xi. So rearranging everything, you can see that d squared xi dx squared is equal to negative 2me divided by h bar squared times xi. So I'm just going to call this constant over here k squared. So you can see that k is going to be equal to the square root of 2me divided by h bar. So this is represented as negative k squared xi. And then for such a differential equation, the general solution is given by some constant times e to the power of ikx plus some constant times e to the power of negative ikx. So this is xi of x for, uh, this is xi of x for region 1, when x is smaller than 0. So now we're going to focus on region 2, when x is larger than, larger than 0. So larger than 0. And then for this region, once again, we just write down the time-independent Schrodinger equation. And then for this region, uh, the, uh, the potential is equal to some constant v0. So we put down plus v0 times xi. And then this is equal to e times xi. So rearranging all, the, all these terms over to the right-hand side, what we're going to get is 2m v0 minus e divided by h bar squared times xi. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to call this collection of constants here l, l squared. So that means L is going to be equal to the square root of 2m v0 minus e divided by h bar. And then I can represent this differential equation as uh, d squared xi dx squared equal to L squared xi. And the general solution for a differential equation in such a form is some constant c times e to the power of negative Lx plus some constant d times e to the power of positive Lx. And then we're going to neglect this term over here because this is going to prevent us from normalizing our solution. So if we include this term, then it, then it is impossible for us to normalize our wave function. And so that is why we're going to neglect this. Because you can see that x, x tends towards infinity. e to the power of positive lx is going to tend towards a very large number. And so for region 2, this is going to be our xi of x. So let us just briefly summarize what we have obtained so far. So, so far we know that xi of x is equal to some constant c times e to the power of negative lx for the region x is larger than 0. And for the region x is smaller than 0, xi of x is equal to a some constant a times e to the power of ikx plus b e to the power of negative ikx, where l is defined as 2m v0 minus e divided by h bar, and k is defined as 2me divided by h bar. And so this is what we have so far. So don't forget what we're looking for is the reflection coefficient. And the reflection coefficient is going to be given by the absolute value of b squared divided by the absolute value of a squared. So what we're looking for is this ratio over here. You can see that uh, this term over here will represent waves traveling to the right. This will re represent waves traveling to the left. So this ratio would, re uh, would give us the, uh, the ratio of waves that would bounce back four waves that are traveling to the right. So this is actually the term that we're going to be interested in. So the way we can derive this term over here is that we're going to consider the continuity requirements of xi of x. So you can see that in order, uh, we, xi of x needs to be continuous, so that is why when we substitute in zero for these two terms, they should be equal. So it should be uh, continuous at the point x is equal to zero. So uh, if I substitute in 
0, you get C for this term. If I substitute in 0 for here, you get A plus B. And so this is what you get. A plus B is equal to C. And then also the derivative of psi of x should also be continuous. So if I differentiate this, I get negative LC e to the power of negative LX. This is for x is larger than 0. And then for this region, I get IKA e to the power of IKX minus IKB e to the power of negative IKX. And this is for the region x is smaller than 0. And then dz dx should also be continuous. So when I substitute in 0 for these two terms, they should also be equal. And so that is why IK a minus b is going to be equal to negative lc. And so these two expressions are very important. We know that these two expressions must be true. And then we are going to use this to try to find this ratio over here. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to, I'm going to divide these two equations by each other. So what we're going to get is that we have a plus b equal to c on one side. And then I'm going to divide the left hand side by i k a minus b. And on the right hand side, I'll divide it by negative lc. So you see that the c's, they cancel out. And in the end, you get a term like this. You get a plus b is equal to negative i k divided by l a minus b. And so now I'm just going to divide both sides by b. So you get something like this. So now you can see that I can just rearrange these terms to find to obtain the ratio. So if I have, so let's just copy this out first. So let's just uh, group all the terms with the a over b together. So let's group it on the left hand side. So a over b we have 1 and then dumping this over to the other side we have plus i k divided by l. So this is at the left hand side on the left hand side and then on the right hand side will be all the remaining terms. So I'm just going to put this uh, 1 over to the other side so I get a negative 1 and then I also have an i k divided by l. So I have an i k divided by l and then minus 1. And then don't forget what we're looking for is the absolute value of b squared divided by the absolute value of a squared. So you can see that b over a, I'm just dumping everything to the right hand side and then dividing this over, is equal to 1 plus i k divided by l and then i k divided by l minus 1. And so we see that our reflection coefficient is equal to the absolute value square of these two terms, which is just the absolute value square of these two complex numbers. So the absolute value square of this complex number is just 1 plus k squared divided by l squared. And the same for this. This is also 1 plus k squared divided by l squared. And so you see that the numerator and denominator are equal. So in the end, you get 1. So the reflection coefficient is equal to 1.